It takes courage for any worker, any worker at all, to stand up and fight the boss in an anti-union America. But it takes so much more for women who have to challenge our society's view of the role of women, not only in the workplace, but very often they have to challenge that view even in their own families, sometimes with cataclysmic we results. Shall not, we shall not be moved like a tree. Standing On January 9, 2010, family, friends, and union activists gathered in Greensboro, North Carolina to celebrate the life of Crystal Lee Sutton. A lifelong advocate for the working class, Sutton was the inspiration for the Academy Award-winning movie Norma Ray, starring Sally Field. In 1979, Sutton boldly encouraged her colleagues at J.P. Stevens Plant in Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina to unionize. Plant bosses fired her because of her organizing activities, but she maintained vocal support for improved workers' conditions until she succumbed to cancer in September 2009. John Wilhelm, president of Unite Here International Union, served as the keynote speaker for the event that celebrated and honored Sutton's commitment to justice. We're fortunate indeed that the history of this remarkable woman, Crystal Lee Sutton, is preserved. And all of us owe a large thank you, certainly to her family and all of her other sisters and brothers who lift up her history so that we can learn from it. Because it is to her history that we must look for hope and inspiration and for guidance. We have to look to thousands of others, counterparts of Crystal Lee Sutton, many of them women, people of color, immigrants, as well as native-born Americans. We have to look to thousands of folks like that, people, some of whom are already leaders in their workplaces or their communities, so many more who have it in them, have it in them to be leaders, like Crystal Lee Sutton. We don't diminish her memory in any way, shape, or form. We don't diminish our admiration for her by insisting that there are many, many Crystal Lee Suttons in waiting. They're all over America. They're in workplaces of every kind in this country. They're in the communities of this country, and indeed, they're all over the world. In 2008, Crystal Lee Sutton told an interviewer, and I quote, It is not necessary I be remembered as anyone, but I would like to be remembered as a woman who deeply cared for the working poor and the poor people of the U.S. and the world. We ought to honor famous people like Dr. King and those labor leaders I mentioned. That's appropriate. But we'd be better off as a society. We'd be better off as a country. We'd be better off as part of our world. We'd be better off as individual human beings. If along with honoring famous leaders, we made sure not only to honor leaders like Crystal Lee Sutton, but we took it as our job to make sure that when we go, when we go home and join her, that we've left behind not one, but a whole raft of people who found their leadership and helped as she did to make this the kind of a world that we want our kids to grow up in and our grandkids to grow up in. Coming off of what uh, Brother Wilhelm said about what we need today, we want to say that in 2010, we need hundreds and thousands of Crystal League Sutton. Today we join those assembled and thousands around the world to lift up the amazing and courageous life of Crystal Lee Sutton, the real Norma Ray. Her death in September of last year brings an end to a life that was inspirational to all those who love justice and deplore oppression. Sister Sutton's determined efforts to empower workers in her textile plant will forever remain a part of working class history that is too often hidden from those who have benefited from it and those who need to learn its lessons. And we are compelled to say that that history is connected to the black freedom struggle in the South that fought and continues to fight for civil, human, and democratic rights. Her work in Roanoke Rapids against great opposition was side by side with African-American workers 
who suffered under the harsh working conditions in the plant and in society. She united with them and them with her to fight the employer. This is as it always should be. Her legacy constantly reminds us of the inseparable relationship between the black freedom movement and the workers' struggle for rights and power. As life would have it, Crystal Lee Sutton in her final years as a victim and a fighter became a leader in the struggle for a decent and humane health care system. She raised her voice to let people know about the disgusting and criminal practices of the health insurance industry as they delayed a decision approving critical medications to treat her cancer. She was not only standing up for herself, but a shining light on an enemy of the working people in this country at a vital time in our struggle for universal health care. Crystal Lee Sutton presented. I was one of the first years that started when they uh, integrated schools. I run at Rapids, North Carolina. And uh, I was blessed to have a mother like her, you know, uh, to taught me not, not to be judgmental, not saying that I never have been judgmental, knowing that, you know, being judgmental, how much actually I would cut myself short by being judgmental and prejudice over people. Of ever meeting, possibly I could actually cut myself real short of meeting someone who is in the ultimate plan. And whose ultimate plan that is? Personally, I call him God. Others call him other names, you know, but that's the other thing about my mom. You know, you know she, she, taught, she, she taught us, you know, no matter what, don't judge. You know, allow people to be themselves regardless. You know, regardless of who they are, allow them to be themselves. I bring you greetings from Workers United, an affiliate of SCIU. My name is Sister Willie Jones, and I had the privilege here of working with Crystal Sutton. I, I, you know, I came from amalgamated textile workers. Then we merged with the amalgamated clothing workers union, which brought us act two. And when I had the privilege to work with Crystal Lee Sutton, I felt like a groupie, you know what I'm saying? I felt like, oh man, I'm getting ready to work with the real Norma Ray here. But I found out that Norma Ray and I, whatever you want to call her, but I called her Crystal Lee because I got to know her that good, had something in common. We both came from textile mills. I came from cone mills, she came from J.P. Stevens, and a mill is a mill no matter which way you look at it. And the president of our union, Bruce Rayner, made me feel good also because Bruce was one of the organizers that worked on that campaign at J.P. Stevens for 16 years, okay? And it took him a long time. But the thing of it is that I was glad that I got to meet a woman of Crystal Lee's stature who made me the woman that I am today, that I can go out, I can organize, I can help get people to know that now is the time that people should stand up. If we don't stand up for something, we're gonna we fall for anything. Let's get it together. Not, we shall not be moved like a tree standing by the water. We shall not be moved.